So as uh, all our webinar participants are hopping onto our session, we are just getting ready here as well. You know, we're basically doing our normal webinar protocols, which is we activated the Facebook Live. So we have a larger audience also via social media channels. And we have our introduction page on. And then we are going to introduce our today's co-hosts, as in each other. So I'm Anna Junnila, and I'm based in Finland during the pandemic. But actually, for the past 20 or so years, I've been in UK and just recently moved to, to Germany as well. So I have two homes. But since the lockdown happened, um, I've been actually based more so in Finland. So welcome everybody from all over the world. Uh, really happy to have you, have you joining us. And, uh, and I'm here with Sheila Rikonen, who's my lovely colleague from Helms Brisco. So we are both venue finders and we're going to introduce today's topic, which is a day as a venue finder during the pandemic. So we tell a little bit about how we're operating at the moment. And because I'm area VP, as in, in charge of the, the Nordics, the Baltic states and Russian market for, for the American organization that we are the largest procurement company in the world. Um, so our clients are some of the Fortune 100 companies as well. Actually, I would say Fortune 1000 because we pretty much have all tiers covered and also association clients who regularly ask us to look for venues. So with Sheila, we work as a team. So welcome, Sheila Rikonen. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm not going to say I'm not a cat, but I'm able to start my video because we are doing Facebook Live. We change our co-host permission. So now I have to be a co-host before I can put on my video. I and, just upgraded you. <laughs> excellent. Thank you so much. So welcome, meeting planners and venue finders. We want to have all this energy Today, um, I just recently drank a sea back thorn at Radisson Blue Olu, and I heard that it's a very invigorating drink. So I'm all uh, shooting for the moon and going to go Aurora hunting today in Rovaniemi, Lapland. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, the sea back thorn uh, is one of our native berries. And because I'm from the west coast of Finland, uh, Turku, uh, it's one of the largest archipelagos in the world. So we have a lot of sea buckthorn there as well. And how it happens, I just had Turkish yogurt with sea buckthorn this morning. So we both, you know. <laughs> We're both supercharged. <laughs> this was something that my grandma taught, you know, to eat almost on a daily basis. <laughs> but yes, excellent. So we're both very Finnish <laughs> with our habits. Um, you know what? Now I'm actually unable to share my screen because you're the host. <laughs> All right. Okay. We're playing so, um, host tennis here today. <laughs> okay, so here we are. I am not going to put off my video because I am here ready for you. I have two LED lamps in front of me. That's a good tip and trick. Nowadays, you have to invest in your technology because what your interaction will involve with clients is really digital. And to make the digital experience more impactful, you have to be ready and prepared. Normally, I would have a Bluetooth and a speaker phone, but today it's a very low tech. I'm just speaking in front of my laptop, which is a MacBook Pro. And right beside me are two LED lamps. Um, I also have a background of the beautiful view of Lapland, which is of course located in the Arctic Circle already. Um, and in the evening, this is a view that you can experience. Either it's the polar night or the Arctic borealis. Exactly. You're getting the northern lights, uh, as you said, uh, borealis also in yeah. up there where you are. You're, you're on the Arctic Circle. So um, the highly likelihood is that you will see those beautiful colors on the sky. Um, I just saw one of my old high school friends posting on a Facebook page. Uh, that he had seen them yesterday, last night. So uh, apparently the, the skies are quite clear because we were there also during winter. I mean, now in the uh, uh, Christmas time with my parents and my partner, 
but I, unfortunately it was a bit cloudy so we couldn't see the the northern lights there so you talked yeah. about the led lights yeah. i actually yeah. have this this daylight uh <laughs> right so uh, a lamp because it gives energy at the same time but i can't have it on whole webinar because then i'll be like unable to sleep it just gives that much energy <laughs> so so i'll just put it off right now it's still enough <laughs> light here it's um, right true so welcome to today's uh, webinar. We're going to actually look at the property where you were uh, last night. So this is uh, the only time that we can, we can really say safely to our colleagues that I know where you slept last night, but this is <laughs> <laughs> this, this happens to be... <laughs> this well, you, don't to be. To, you don't need to be embarrassed because I put it in Twitter, in <laughs> Facebook, and in my LinkedIn. <laughs> And I tagged Radisson Blue because, of course, they're a very popular brand in Finland. And, of course, I can see with utmost sincerity that the experience has been really tremendously good at Radisson Blue Oulu. And fortunately, when I called Visualizer yesterday, your technical team said that, um, oh, we just took a new update from Radisson Blue Oulu. And therefore, we are going to be able to present it. I wasn't thinking of presenting it today because I just go there as a normal um, check-in, you know, tourist. Um, and surprisingly, of course, they have visualizer visit. <laughs> exactly. So there are some new photos in here as well. But I mean, I'm just showing more of the, that meeting uh, presentation that we have in our portfolio. Um, so we have the just kind of like... Uh, I would say, bared version because we're still uploading um, all those new new images. So this one, I think they initially was made six years ago. So we have had this virtual site visit 360 available that long. Um, so that's why some of the images are not necessarily you know, something that you've seen uh, on, on your visit because we have just received the new images. And, uh, and it's quite, you know, great because we instantly update them once once that happens, so that's in the process. So when once you call, they're like, oh, actually we're just in the process. It's true. So the title of our presentation today is The Day in the Life of a Venue Finder. When I came to the northern part of Finland, of course, I am always aware what are the prospects here for my business as we work as associate in Hells Briscoe and we are independent. So it's always possible for me to go to my online app of visualizer visit and talk to the person sitting next to me and try to sell the hotel immediately, right? And that's exactly. what we do as a venue finder. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you know, we are constantly tuned in and that applies also to during pandemic. We've been very busy upskilling and we've looked at a lot of venues although virtually, and you know, there's a lot of destination webinars as well. So it's been exciting that we have been part of Croatia, Split and Hvar uh, destination webinars that we organized together with the DMCs and the hotels uh, with the lovely Dubrovnik. We can also look at that today as well. And then, um, so there's been quite a few lovely locations that I didn't really know as much before COVID. And because we are very lucky to have such a modern solutions in our hands, uh, we've, see, we've still been able to, you know, have those um, moments where we learn uh, about the venues and learn about locations that we want to visit, we want to definitely take our clients to. And as we organize our own events together with Sheila as well, um, we are about to, to choose some of those locations uh, for our next year's events. Are we are already booking live events as well um, for this year. So it's quite exciting. I saw yesterday in um, the independent UK newspaper that it was just saying that uh, the Secretary of Transportation was telling everybody not to book holidays yet because it's illegal. So he was misquoting the law. Um, what he meant was that don't book holidays right now because there's uncertainty whether you're able to travel during summer. Well, I actually disagree because same as my mom, <laughs> we always do book properties, you know, way beforehand. 
And if we, there for some reason we are unable to, to go, luckily the cancellation policies allow us to then, then cancel those later on. But, but we do want to put those dates onto our calendar and you know, make most of uh, what we can to actually go as well. Yes, that is quite true, Anna. I think that we have to be very mindful of how we interpret the newspapers today. And I think that because we were not born to be a venue finder, we have to develop our skills to be a good one. And I can see that we have meeting planners right here in from, from England, from the UK. So those that you said are very relevant to them. And today also our colleagues are in a presentation for our Central European partner hotels. And we don't expect as many of our associates here in our presentation today, but uh, every week we do have our presentations for partner hotels. Exactly. I mean, partner holders are, are really the core of our business because we keep very close contact and uh, I think we have the best relationships also because we put a lot of volume, a lot of bookings into these properties. So um, we stay updated naturally because of that. And, uh, and when we say about partner properties, we talk about all the large chains and also the key cities in the world. On top of that, we have our own favorites, our secret locations that we keep in our back pocket that we can you know, ace it out you know, when the client wants something maybe out of the box or, you know, no one's really had an access there before. Um, we know this, that there's a lot of new properties coming on market right now. Uh, there was also another article about hospitals and uh, schools and all these locations changing into accommodation providers and hotels. And yesterday I was lucky to visit one quite an exciting one it used to be a prison and now it's been transferred into apartments and a meeting space so uh, I went there for for lunch yesterday because in Finland we are able to still go to restaurants and uh, and the lady you know who was serving the food you know she was just really excited it had just opened in September and you know the place looked phenomenal um, there weren't that many people that's why we went there because they keep they do keep restrictions as well on number of people in restaurants but mm, yeah definitely excited to see that when the live events commence so we are actually live here with radisson and uh, I, i'm so thankful you shared with you uh with us your anecdotes because i think this day-to-day -day interchange of how life it is as a venue finder is quite significant um even just um an hour conversation with people that you work with is, is really important to keep our sanity. So thank you for sharing those. Um, when, you, when you spoke about Radisson, of course, I can describe very well in details how it is to book and stay in a hotel as a foreign individual tourist or as a tourist in a local tour. Um, I, when you, for example, show later on the Radisson Blue, I can describe the check-in, the plexiglass experience. Um, the face mask procedure in Radisson Blue, the dining experience during breakfast, how it has changed, um, the surroundings and the social distancing protocol, the sauna experience during uh, COVID times, you know, the details that I, I want to, to learn from um, is remarkable. And of course, um, this is something that we can discuss as well. Well, here we Radisson go. I mean, this is the breakfast area. So... Um, how was it this morning? So um, the sea back turn is, of course, a very important feature of Radisson. Um, when we went to Nordvike in, in um, Amsterdam, nearby, uh, one hour from Amsterdam, Radisson also had very good breakfast. And Radisson has always had very good breakfast, by the way. So um, I check in, in very late in the evening, and it's very amazing to... Uh, to Take note that nowadays hotels have a special promotion. So I took the one with the champagne, obviously. <laughs> so you have a special promotion with champagne in Radisson Blue Oulu today. 
and they come with uh, three glasses and one bottle of French champagne. And I took that and I went to my app and booked myself the dates. And I called the reception just to make sure that they are around at 11 p.m. And indeed they are. But there was only one guy, Mat Matias, Mati. And he said he will be there and he's going to take care of the champagne. And he was the same person who brought me the champagne to my room. <laughs> so that's amazing. <laughs> Um, he's the hotel receptionist and he's the one also bringing the champagne. And oh, it's, it's, so you've got a really uh, <laughs> hospitality experience. I mean, we all miss that. I mean, it's been almost, yeah, it's been nine months at least uh, since had any sort of hospitality entertainment in, in that way. Amazing. That's true. <laughs> I'm very mindful, yeah. I'm very mindful that he was behind the plexiglass. So in Rod Rodison Blue Olu, there is a plexiglass where the recept you cannot, uh, you know, and he reminded me over the phone to wear my masks and make, sh make sure that there is social distance. And there are marks on the floor, which I think with visualizer visit, we can pinpoint or we could graphically allocate the marks because you cannot stand very close to the person in front of you or behind you. So there are plexi, there are, there's a plexiglass, there are uh, marks on the floor and there are face masks available with disinfectant uh, nearby the elevator doors. Um, in the sauna area is a disinfectant and of course there were no people in the sauna area this is not high season at the moment but if you are of course a skiing a skier or on a ski holiday the northern part of uh, Finland is a desirable location and yes, uh, remarkably definitely. yeah it's located near the University of Oulu and uh, there are very high highly regarded landmarks in um, the city of Oulu. Um, there are art galleries, there are walking, um, yes, there are walking, look, walking distances, uh, landmarks, and you can experience, of course, the polar nights in Oulu. It's one of the um, uh, capital, even a telecom capital of Finland, because Nokia is, of course, having um, an important R&D in Oulu. And I think robotics as well, AI, and the University of Oulu has very much uh, good exchange with uh, global uh, think tanks. Also, the Google servers sit in uh, in Oulu. Uh, there's a lot of servers globally that are based there. So apparently, the cool climate keeps those running a bit more smoothly. And also, uh, it is called the capital of the northern you know, uh, Scandinavia or uh, capital of North. I think that's what it says at the airport as well, the capital it's of North. True. So right. Oulu is a beautiful place itself. You know, people are very uh, kind and hospitable. So, um, and you mentioned about the skiing. Yes, there's also ski areas there. We, uh, when we went to a, a bit, you know, Northern uh, from there, we made sure that our apartment had a sauna because we kind of didn't want to share. It was very busy season during Christmas. So they were, pr they were pretty much fully booked in, in all of the parts. And uh, we just wanted to have a private sauna for that reason. But when it's quite quiet now, um, you know, it's, it's obviously quite safe to go and they really make sure that everything is cleaned well. And I mean, we are so lucky in Finland to be able to, you know, visit restaurants and <clears throat> yeah, go to public saunas and spas as well and uh, have our haircuts because my uh, partner, he's uh, from Holland and he just returned from Netherlands to, um, to Finland. He was able to come here because, you know, we as uh, partners, I mean, we live together also in Finland. So um, that was the only reason he got through the the border but uh, otherwise you know we have a strict travel ban at the moment and um, he also said that you know he hasn't had a haircut since he was you know in Netherlands and none of those places are open also in Germany they're all closed so so uh, here in Finland you're able to have all, all your services still and I mean that's why we are very mindful how free we are still uh, comparing to rest of the world in some parts. I mean, Singapore has opened. They have live events. There was an exciting one this week as well. Thanks for that. Thanks for sharing.
sharing those anecdotes, Anna. Mm -hmm. It is quite true. And if you're, by the way, a holder of Radisson Blue uh, royalty rewards, loyalty rewards, you might want to look at the visualizer visit map of the whole archipelago of Finland, making sure that you stay in a Radisson or if it's a, if, it, if you are more inclined to Hilton or Marriott, then you can find a lot of those as well as Sokos and Scandic. So we have presentations with Visualizer Visit with those brands. And thankfully that's all available for you to, to look at. And if there's something missing, you may contact Mines Visualizer Visit, making sure that that will be added to their portfolio. Exactly. I mean, because we did that same venue hopping last time that we're doing now. So we went to the IET London in Savoy Place. But let's hop on to our other favorite, which is the Hotel Du Provenic. Um, we quite like the fact that there's a drone 360 image, you know. So if you, if you know anything about photography, um, there are very high restrictions in most of the capital cities globally on drone photography. So you cannot get it in Amsterdam, for example. Uh, I'm sure London's not allowing it. So um, having this image has, you know, has some novelty or special, you know, background story in it. Uh, so not all the cities allow it. And look at that incredible view that, you know, this city is so beautiful. I mean, we are, it's Dubrovnik Hotel, but it's actually based in Zagreb. So <laughs> just to, to clarify. It's Joanna. The reason why I go to fam trips or virtual fam trips nowadays is really even to learn more of the destination, to see all this Gothic church, churches and images of the Middle Ages live on screen and not just, you know, see some old good old PDFs and PowerPoints. So I, I know how sophisticated presentations has become and I expect the same from our meeting planners as well um, that you know we could be introduced to a destination where the property or the venue is located and this is the best way to do it definitely like here we have the back story to where the hotel is located so it's very close to the Ban Yelachik square in the, the central square of the Zagreb so you can read this from the visualizer all this information is actually inside of the presentation itself. And then we can, on top of that 360 view that we can take of the whole city, um, we can step into our hotel from this smart tag that you can see here. So I'm clicking it with my mouse and we'll hop into the lobby. So here we are, there are lovely, lovely you know, individuals welcoming us in, already smiling. And um, this is our, normal site visit experience that when we walk in you know there's the the hotel manager or the hotel staff already waiting for us and that's a great best practice also that we do with our clients who are coming with us on a on a site visit so we'll make sure to be outside and waiting you know ready to go and uh, here we see also the layout and the lifts that they have uh, we often talk about these lifts uh, during covid is that you know how many people they allow in and we have a standard of just having our own group per lift. So you, you wouldn't be, you know, mixing the, I would say households or, or the guests groups. So whoever you came with, that would be the small group that you go into the lift with. And we can again, tap the smart tag and we get into the meeting for you. So here we are, uh, we have a bit of a Christmas theme just, you know, left from a few months back. And, uh, and we can see, you know, this lovely space as well, how our reception area would look like. Mm -hmm. And these doors are actually quite stylish. And talking about the elevator lifts, Anna, um, yes. to leave, make your hands dry because you're using too much disinfectant. I noticed in some lifts in Southeast Asia, I traveled there in June last year of the summer, that they actually have disinfectants when you get inside the lifts. So if you have a visualizer visit, you can identify already which of the elevators or which of the lifts um, could, could have a disinfectant, especially if you're having an in-person event of 50 or 100 people. So you can identify already the salient points where the um, face mask will be placed. Like I was in um, 
uh, Sokos or Scandic event lately in Helsinki. Um, there are places where you can put your face mask and your disinfectant and images like capacity chats and interactive, interactive charts can really help with that. Definitely. So as you say, we can mark where the disinfectants will be located for our events by using this. So we can drag and drop and, and copy paste all these images that we have on Visualizer. But here um, we were looking at already the lobby area. So we can go in again, just tapping at the, the capacity, I mean, sorry, the floor plan. And with this smart axe, we can also enter into the meeting room. So let's just continue with our site visit and, and see the, the room that we are in. And you can look at the room features as well on the left-hand side that the, the largest room, the Ban Elastic, has this um, you know, ceiling height of 2.6 meters to 2.95 in the middle, where the protector is also located on the screen. And then we can see all these uh, you know, beautiful, actually, views from this property. I mean, look at the yeah. central views. The market area is right there, Christmas market. Now, before I actually lose this thread in my head, Anna, I'm just pointing out that I think even without the COVID or the pandemic, I would love to have my visualizer visit on my hand in a mobile app, just because I don't memorize the ceiling height of that particular room. So in the future, because I only learned a visualizer visit during um, early last year, I didn't know what would be the maximum height or, you know, I, I don't have that on my head as a meeting planner. So even a site inspection in the future will involve for me um, a copy of all these details. And I think a visualizer visit will just be so handy. Definitely. And as you mentioned, not having those numbers in your head, it happens to us a lot because, you know, usually we are taking a look maybe into three or five hotels and venues on the same day because we are very efficient people in our industry you know and we like to mingle and meet people and we make a lot of uh, you know connections and and make sure that when we travel somewhere we see and experience most of it you know it's nature of our well ourselves and our industry so that also creates some issues uh, for example memorizing memorizing you know the the look of the ballroom, the size of it, etc. So that's why we can revisit also after that live site visit um, to Ban Yelasik. This is the room that we were in. It's here in the bottom that you can see. So this is an interactive capacity chart, but I can also go back into the room from here so that we can keep on playing. Okay, we saw the capacity 55 um, on, the, on a U shape. And also we can then uh, check the other capacity. So classroom style, which is now the most popular uh, seminar layout during COVID for the social distancing, uh, that would take 110. If we take the centrum, the other room here, and, and just check how that looks like, um, here we can also have on a normal capacity 110. So that means 50 uh, approximately right now. And uh, this one is the central area for lunch. So we would have maximum 50 individuals here at the same time. It's Joanna. I think this is quite delightful and really making my job to have the client sign the contract on the very same day. I mean, uh, when I go to a destination city, I'm not just going to look at even two, two places that would, of course, be very convenient. Maybe I will go as far as three or five even to an event that involves 1,000 people. And if I download in my mobile app five venues from visualizer visit, I can very well be confident when I go on site that I remember the ceiling height, the maximum capacity, and I could go in my mobile app, whether it's online or as a downloadable feature, um, all, the, all the best uh, highlights that I can um, pinpoint to my client regarding this venue. Definitely. I mean, this is the thing, pinpointing and highlighting is easier as you said here, and we can look at how many people we fit into each table and, and where do we put, again, our banners and disinfectants, uh, you know, those little hand bottles. So um, have you been to Zagreb? 
Um, I have been to Croatia. Of course, they have a very active mice event. Um, Convention. Oh, yes, that as well. True, true, true. Sorry, you know, I thought. <laughs> and look at those seafoods. You can maybe highlight the food from that region and you can have your chef coming to a presentation with you in a visualizer visit. And you can publish the menu for your particular event by asking the hotel if they would kindly put in this presentation the menu for your 1000 person delegates. Exactly, we can have the menus attached here as well. So when we do a tailored uh, like presentation with our clients, you know, usually we are using Zoom at the moment or Teams. Um, we make sure that in our presentations, we also talk about the food because that is, that's one of the most important parts of the event. And it's, uh, it's kind of like the make or break part. I've been in so many amazing venues where you would think that, wow, well, this is going to leave the client so happy. And then just that one part, you know, if the breakfast just doesn't, you know, quite add up or, you know, that dinner, that chicken, it was overcooked. Suddenly, you know, they remember that most vividly. But on the other way around as well, if you have, uh, you know, wow, this place, you know, it's, it wasn't exactly how I was picturing it. Um, and then the food is incredible. People just talk about that and they're just happy, you know, happy with the really good catering as well. As long as, you know, the shower works and the, everything else is kind of in condition. <laughs> Personally, yes, you can even definitely um, focus on the lighting, how well the carpets are maybe new or refurbished, and even just the general atmosphere. And if we want to change it for our event, we can easily plan using this um, this feature, the visualizer visit on where the banners will be. Um, and nowadays I'm really concerned about filter, air filter, Anna. You've spoken so much about it in the past. Can you tell us about your, you know, your tips and tricks on how to have a healthy air ventilation within the meeting venue? That's, a, that's actually an important part of uh, the industry at the moment because hotels are upgrading a lot of their air conditioning systems. Uh, so that the air is pumping from outside and circulates back outside so that it doesn't circulate between the rooms. And uh, these are some of the questions we have also when we're doing venue finding and choosing locations is how that AC works. That um, are we now talking about exactly what you said about the filters, you know, when uh, do they have the, the new, uh, I would say the hypodermic, uh, very much of a the high high um, hygienic, what is it called again? Disinfectant system, because uh, actually one of my really good uh, friends, you know, from high school works for the Fetch Robotics. Fetch Robotics is a famous American company and they literally have robots that are roaming around these kind of meeting spaces and airports and, you know, uh, toilet areas, for example, and they keep on spraying the disinfectants in the air as well so they go through meeting spaces before the the you know event starts and then during for example uh, lunch break they can go around again of course you know we are mostly doing it manually so we have staff who uh, goes through the 10 touch points that we talk about in our industry so all the handles all the surfaces like coffee or tea machines if they are in operation which we don't really recommend but in uh, some Globe, like regions, they, they still have tea and coffee machines in events as, as not human, you know, service. Um, then they, they go and basically clean those like every 15 minutes. So, so we do talk about a lot about these details, how to make that event safer in terms of the air. And one of the best ways is to have space where you have a terrace or any kind of outdoor space that you can open the doors also to air it between the sessions and so forth. So small details that make a big difference. It's Joanna. I noticed there is a hand sign on the right hand corner of this presentation. Yes. Yeah, so as you mentioned, uh, wait a second, are we looking at the Croatian? I don't actually speak the language. So we have the disinfectant and the hygiene details here. Uh, maybe it's in English in the bottom. Oh, here, yes. So here are the guidelines. So we request also the COVID 
safety and hygiene guidelines from the hotels when we are booking. And we recommend to be placing all those, because you can actually download it directly from the, the visualizer. So we recommend also our event organizers to place this on the event website uh, or even email it to the clients uh, when we are telling about the venues that you know all these details are taken care of. Because those that are not in our industry, I don't think they're as well informed how far venues and hotels have gone to make sure that you know they keep their properties very clean. They've always kept them clean, but now there's that extra layer. I would say that's true, Ina. Um, in Visualizer Visit, you will find properties that have hand sign. And if you notice that there is a property without this hand sign, uh, feature on their uh, visualizer visit, we definitely need to ask them to put one, whether it's a one page uh, information or a whole, you know, a whole bunch of documents such as one of the big global chains we have actually has um, really what we call an event ready feature. And that's kind of like our Bible today in the meetings industry. Yes. Exactly. I mean, now I'm just playing around, <laughs> excuse me, but uh, that's, that's the thing, you know, we, we are actually well informed. This is one thing I think it's been drilled to us during the past 10 months is the COVID hygiene details uh, by all the major hotel chains. So we can easily quote, you know, some of the uh, fine tunes, but have you noticed also on booking.com and everywhere else, uh, They've started to also add those so that's very good practice it's kind of best practice for events i think to really highlight how the uh, social distancing is organized and how the the accommodation providers are organizing the hygiene standards Indeed, Anna. Um, during this pandemic, I have been staying in an Airbnb because of renovation in my apartment. And safety and security is one of the criteria to qualify to be listed. And that's the same for the meetings industry, certainly. Um, the only way we can rebook um, and even ask participants or delegates on a non-guaranteed room block to actually go and book their, you know, their room for an event in October 2021 is for us to make a visualizer visit to an association or a company that has very reluctant attendees on you know, thinking about safety and security. Are they gonna be protected when they go to for October Fest? Are their family gonna be happy sleeping at night knowing that you know, there is a COVID safety in that particular hotel? Yes, I mean, when you're booking when you did your booking for the Radisson, um, you already knew the guidelines for, for Radisson chain because we have gone over those <laughs> many times. So did you actually, as by default, check whether they were following those protocols? <laughs> <laughs> The refurbishment was a very important part of their story because in 2019, Radisson Blue Olu refurbished and uh, surprisingly COVID came in 2020 and still they're open now. And I, get, I can see that the plexiglass was very high, you know, high quality. It's not like some something they have just, you know, taken out. It's really customized for hotels and the social distancing because of their big and large restaurants, they have the possibility for even three meter social distancing. Um, some of the hotels in the USA, if we notice, have plexiglass right in the buffet, but now we are just very prudent and wear a face mask when we go and take our food in a buffet. Yes, definitely. So they also provide gloves in Finland. I hardly ever see anyone putting the gloves on. But I mean, it's definitely something that I also, I'm a bit of a mask police sometimes because I go and ask people to wear the masks. Uh, during our Christmas dinner, uh, we went to this very authentic Lapland restaurant with my parents. And there was this family like next uh, on the next table, but they stood up, you know, as three kids and the parents to go to the, the buffet area where you could actually, um, well, you could like in a social distancing way, get your food. But I had to stop them because I said that, unfortunately, because my dad is in a risk group that, you know, if they could kindly wear masks as well, since we take care of our hand hygiene, but we can't really, you know, do anything with the breathing. And in USA, they have now guided 
to wear two masks because apparently the one mask doesn't really protect. So I think we're, I'm quite happy that people actually start with one mask, you know, everywhere. <laughs> I do have my very own um, PPEs. Um, I think nowadays it's recommended that we use our medical grade PPEs, um, proper equipment. And I noticed that during my stay in Asia, um, a, a lot of, uh, when I went for a site inspection in a newly opened hotel, this time in uh, Finland, it's the Valo Hotel in Mannheim and the main uh, street of Finland, the uh, site inspection, head was giving us face masks so meaning that you know it's it costs more to actually hospitalize than for your guests to wear a free face mask when they come for a visit and that's i think the future at least for the next few years you give uh your guests the face mask and make sure that they know where the site or in, in the site that's the disinfectant and all the um salient locations Exactly. I mean, that's a good uh, advice also for event organizers to always have those masks, you know, for all the attendees. And they can be branded really nicely. I just ordered uh, from, I don't know if you tested the, the Wish site, but, yeah. uh, but my first experience with Wish is that I, um, I ordered 500 masks. I'm not really sure if they're going to be Barbie masks or are they like normal size masks because I haven't got them yet. <laughs> but, but I hope that they're the normal size. And, um, and uh, I'll see, you know, I'll have some medical grade ones, which I also bought from the German airport uh, last summer. As you mentioned, uh, the FFP, uh, so FFP2, FFP3, all those medical grade ones. And then these disposable ones that you can just kind of, if you walk into a, I don't know, bakery, get your bun and then you can throw that into the recycling bin you know afterwards it's true uh, i noticed that the bigger brands have the logos on their face mask and that's of course to increase brand awareness really certainly um it, it's you know it's just a reality we have to accept and um, wherever it's possible of course you can continue your branding um in presentations and everywhere definitely i think you know talking about the brand awareness imagine how much some companies used to pay for people to stand on the streets and then have their logo written on the stomach of or the chest of some guy you know <laughs> uh, this you know this is now easier with the masks so there's a lot of branding like you said uh, happening around that it's a new opportunity i mean covid has presented a lot of new opportunities we can also talk about the takeaway business i mean how many restaurants have suddenly become takeaway restaurants you know home delivery restaurants or even hotels are now doing the the takeaways and and there's one particular hotel in uh, in Dusseldorf called Friends Francis um, they are now a winery so you can order um, wine delivery from the hotel it's true um, in some cases our hotel hosts from Central Europe had food trucks in the vicinity or even inside the premises. And they explained that this is to develop the relationship with their loyal customers who miss their food, their banquet, their um, you know, restaurant taste. And they have conveniently made sure that they continue to serve those clients in this way. So I think we presented also the Hilton Double Tree in Amsterdam this summer, where they have what you call bike and go. And that's even something, you know, like a really relevant information. And it still sticks to my memory that because the city is famous for bicycles, it's called bike and go. And so you take the restaurant and then you take it away and still you feel like you've been to the double tree hilton amsterdam i love that concept and i hope that it will spread around because you know i mean bike or run and go either way uh happy to you know get that coffee and just um yeah have a bit of a feeling of the normality and it's one way to also keep these businesses running i mean just transforming it to to fit with what we can do at the moment I mean, these outdoor experiences are now becoming a huge hit. Um, I'm already experiencing with geosiding uh, geo and like, um, you know, there's all these haka and distancing, you know, uh, games that you can play. So we can do a lot of events outdoors as well right now. 
with the safety distance in mind. And I keep on mentioning about the, the pizza layout of the outdoor event that we did for 600 people in Germany last, I mean, 2020 summer. And, uh, but it was such a successful layout, you know, just having that circle and in the slices and no person can cross the other uh, slice as in they're color coded. Um, there were no cases from that event, 600 people for two days. And uh, I would heavily recommend, you know, a lot of the events to explore these social distancing setups, you know, that we have available in our industry. Certainly, Central Europe hoteliers have been very creative. We have hosted the Clarion Congress Hotel Prague, the Hilton Old Town Prague, and the Hilton Prague, which in normal times are really central locations for big events. And let's say, for example, in Hilton Prague, they have an interactive dining where the chef introduces um, entertainment alongside the dining. And when you mention about the pizza slice, uh, Congress uh, seating arrangement. I think we saw that from Clarion Congress Prague as well. Yes, definitely. Prague has all the capacity, and uh, and also the Hilton Prague, as that is the Europe's largest meeting venue. Uh, that is one that you know they can easily do it also indoors for for bigger groups. And here we see the view from this property in Zagreb. And when we talk about drone photography, is Visualizer able to provide us with a photographer that is expert in drone photography? Or well, I would say yes. Okay, if if it comes to production, because you know I'm also part of the mice compliance team, so we always look at whether the product itself, as in what we what we make as a Visualizer presentation, that you know it answers to meeting planners' questions. Uh, when we are booking hotels. So um, we have a set number of drone photographers, but not globally. Also for the reason that, because uh, I've done a lot of outdoor events where I've used drone photographers, but we mentioned already this aspect of legality uh, being a problem because drone photography is considered as invasive for privacy. I mean, we can't see all these individuals down here, but, but let's say, you know, if there was a spy there and you know <laughs> somebody was looking for a specific person, you know, the photography can be that sharp that by zooming in, you know, you start to recognize individuals. So these are some of the reasons why we are not, you know, for example, this white haired gentleman here with the lady. I mean, those that know, you know, that they're looking for somebody who's in Zagreb that fits this prescription, you know, uh, you might be able to take it from this photo. So I know it's far-fetched, but this is the reason why it's not legal in all the cities. So yes, we can organize it, short answer. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, and then you can incorporate videos, um, almost any type of media form in the visualizer visit. Definitely. And like one of the most effective or impactful ways of uh, bringing customers to your favorite venue is with video and 360 combined effect. Because, you know, when you're showing them how much they can get information from this photo, um, what they can plan with it, because video you are getting an ambience with, but with this one, you're getting a planning tool. So, you know, this gives you kind of very, a bit, I would say this gives you a more realistic uh, expectation on what what's you know what's gonna be front of you when you arrive whereas video you can play around and and you know edit it so that you kind of skip some parts of this image that we can see 360 of it's it's true and it's very realistic because of course you cannot lie in a 360 degree image and not, not that we are we are very realistic always with our clients brutally honest to the to the teeth and that's because we don't want disappointments we don't want um you know refunds let's say and we want to get the you know the give the most the best experience by the same time also honest in the features if there is something that they don't like in the room they can take it away if there is an offensive photo for a conservative guest you can take it away or we can at least ask our supplier to 
you know, minimize the concerns. And um, accordingly, um, the VIPs can judge whether this room has enough capacity for um, a C-level meeting in the evening or a board meeting in the morning. So uh, looking at the rooms themselves has a lot of impact already. Exactly, you see two sinks here as well. So it's like a PRC. Um, it's a nice, very nice rest, uh, restroom or toilet area for this one. And very brand new showers and all of that. So we can see that there's some upgrade happening uh, in this property that will take some time to go through all the rooms. Uh, if we look at the standard twin room, uh, which is also one of the popular popular ones. These ones you see that, okay, so you have quite a uh, good size beds there and the room features will just tell you that they're comfortable. Okay, so that's a quite minimal description, but you could have a bit more here. And you can instantly see if there is uh, those power sockets next to the bed. Uh, what do they have actually next to the bed? And, uh, and those are quite important features as well that, you know, some of the clients, especially staycationers and those that work remotely, they always want to check, you know, what kind of amenities do we have in the room? And uh, there was a lot of documents now about remote work and people choosing hotels and apartments to, to stay for even a month or longer. So it's becoming more important to really uh, be able to check the amenities. It's true. Certainly, if you pay up a good price, you definitely need to get your value for your money. And that's the same thing with mice. I think uh, with an event that I'm planning on October 2021, I intend to make the delegates book as many rooms as possible. Um, I was even told that in this particular selection that I have made, the hotels are fully booked. So I cannot put 150 in this hotel. Um, mm -hmm. So already there is um, um, kind of competition for the Q4 2021 on the best venues you can find. And That's right. The travel plans are lifting for corporates in August, September, uh, if things are going according to plan. Since last year, they have quoted uh, September being the, the kickoff kind of for the live meeting. So let's hope that that's why the bookings are there and it's busy. It's true. But for me to get a competitive edge to the other person booking the event, I am going to ask my association members to look at the hotel in a visualizer visit, making sure that they book as early as possible with a very flexible contract. Exactly. The contracting clauses are something that you know we are really good at. Uh, so we have our special COVID clause library. So it's designed to make sure that our events, our clients are fully protected. And, uh, you know, in terms of very flexible cancellation policies, rescheduling dates, you know, and all of that, you know, the, all those uh, important parts that we incorporate into our contracts always, force mature, of course. But then uh, besides the contracting part, it's the relationship that really counts. Like when we are talking with the hotels, when we have had these visualizer co-hosting sessions with, you know, 50 plus properties now uh, during the past, you know, few months, uh, we built some really great relationships also for future. And uh, everybody who attends, uh, they also are able to build that relationship because we share the attendee details with the hotels and they can also then be in contact. And then you can have all that insight and good relationship also uh, benefit from that when you start booking. And you talked about the property that you mentioned in Stuttgart, for example, being fully booked. The same thing is in Finland that we have extremely competitive, uh, I would say, <laughs> a year ahead because, you know, people are now pushing the dates. So they have set the live events and they just keep on rescheduling and pushing those dates until we can have 100 or 300 uh, people events. Um, so yeah, it's very saturated. So if you are planning or even wishing to have a live event this year, it's better to put those dates in the books and, and then renegotiate dates if, if uh, you have to. It's true. I think the ball comes down to the 
on our professionalism on how well we enable our client to actually sign with confidence. The contracts that we need, perhaps even just a share button on this visualizer visit can create an impact, meaning that if they share this particular page using the share sign button, they will put that in their intranet making sure that any updates from the hotel will be live on their part and they will be able to see any changes without the hotel giving them an email and saying, hey, I made a change in the window or the filter or the ventilation and take a look at this link. The same link can work every time the hotel makes changes. So um, you can publish it in your event website and you could certainly invite people to take a look at that location. Definitely. I mean, there's, there's 181 social media and other ways of sharing this. So by email, you can print it, print the, the image that we had there, put it directly to the WhatsApp messenger, email, LinkedIn or so forth. So whatever you want to publish. So, for example, having that event pin interest or Twitter or Instagram account attached to um, and you, you can just directly share, share this one, for example, the 360 image. As you can see, the link changes as I'm turning this around. So you can start that link from exactly the point where um, I'm actually stopping it. So I'm going to go all the way around to see this lovely castle. And we can share it's this true. one. And I'll oh. put it in the chat so you all, all our participants can also enjoy this presentation in their own time. And you are able to access it anytime. It's free. Um, you can share it with anybody you want and uh, and definitely, you know, it's going to really give you a nice experience. So we're actually, of course, inviting those that are attending today. If you want to be our co-host, we would be happy to have you here. And we would, of course, even make a visualizer visit of your selected hotel or the property or the venue that you would like us to talk about. And with the cooperation, of course, of the hotel, we will be able to make a very good presentation that can be recorded and distributed to your association members or your corporate guests. Exactly. So we are so happy to have our special guest also next week from Hilton, Dubai. Um, so we will be talking a lot about World Expo and uh, how it's going to affect also the, the business, you know, from a live end, because Dubai has extremely strict curfew at the moment. You know, they actually get fined if they go outside, you know, after a certain time. Same th thing as in Netherlands and Germany, Netherlands, if you go out after nine o'clock, you also get fined. So um, it's interesting to hear directly from, from uh, our co-host how they are coping with these kind of curfews and what they think that's going to happen now. You know, I heard that the vaccination schedule is really, you know, it's holding. So they are going through hundreds of thousands of vaccinations, you know, really efficiently at the moment. So World Expo, I believe, will definitely stay as a live event. We also have the Tokyo 2020, so Tokyo uh, Olympics, supposedly going live this summer. Um, there's several huge events that, you know, are now taking place, hopefully with the vaccination again, you know, succeeding. Indeed, um, I'm going to have actually a very thematic presentation to my clients, those that are attending World Expo to, uh, to Dubai from, let's say, the Nordic countries, I would have a compilation of hotels that I can actually show them that also sells at the same time the expo tickets. So, for example, we have three properties in Hilton, Dubai already presenting, and then we have, of course, our very global brands right there in Dubai that will be on board and making sure that our clients have a selection of choices to consider before they actually book the World Expo tickets. Exactly, so like you said, there is a, a bundle ticket, so you get accommodation. Same thing with Tokyo as well. Um, we were going to go to see the climbing Olympics. First time climbing is actually accepted to Olympics. And then this happened. So, um, this is our target to get to the Tokyo um, live competitions this summer. So if it goes live, you, you know I'll be there in Tokyo. <laughs> so that's true. The hashtag sharing is caring and stronger together 
is not just a buzzword. It's a really, it's a reality that we try to live on. Um, as, as meeting planners are kind of like exchanging tips and making sure that the expertise is also shared in, especially in times of an pandemic. Yeah, we, we are supporting each other. And uh, this is the thing, you know, we make our dreams come through no matter what. So sometimes we have to wait. I mean, it's also part of, part of that, you know, reward is that after being patient that you, you do get to experience something amazing like that. So even if it takes a year longer, still commencing with the initial dream and the plans. Indeed, um, I'm looking forward to our next few weeks presentation. And we have had attendees here in our uh, se webinar sessions that have been meticulously present um, all this time. So we trust that you are already experts on visualizer visits. Um, it's so intuitive and so easy to use that you can immediately actually start using it. And it comes at no cost. So feel free to contact us or mindsvisualizergroup.com for your co-hosting session or if any questions regarding the update of your specific property that you want to use. Definitely. We'll be happy to have you on board and look forward to also seeing you next week. Uh, really, you know, good, have actually really beautiful Valentine's Day. In Finland, Valentine's Day is a friendship day. So that's how we translate it. So we often celebrate also by just memorizing and uh, giving gifts to our friends uh, and just, you know, sending lovely messages. So, so for the loved ones, uh, not only the, the wives and husbands and, you know, partners, but of course, you know, hopefully you remember your, your partner as well. <laughs> Can you share us the most romantic hotels in the world? Yes, of course, we will try to honor that request and we make you a Valentine's Day presentation if that's what you like. Oh, definitely. We're going to publish some of the most romantic ones on our visualizer Facebook and also Visualizer LinkedIn. So if you would like to follow us, uh, it's a Visualizer visit and Visualizer group that you can also find all the social media channels from. And we keep on publishing a lot of these site visits there as well. So that's, uh, that's bye for now from me as well. And I hope, Sheila, that you're going to really make most out of your time in the north, you know, the beautiful winter wonderland. And uh, we'll go across country skiing here in the south as well. <laughs> Thank you so much everyone and to the UK participants have a good rest of the day as well. Thank you everybody. Au revoir. Auf Wiedersehen Germany. Bye. Okay.